Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Game Changer. I'm David Villa. I'm here. It's Tuesday. Welcome to Freestyle. <laughs> what are we talking about this morning? Mountain moving thing. I know, Mike. It was just a joke. I better know. <laughs> but but we didn't know. We didn't know when we launched the uh, the series. We wanted to we wanted to really just kind of kind of go with it, flow with the Holy Spirit a little bit, kind of bring some topical messages to the uh, podcast. And so today's day two. My wife Diane, I miss her here, and uh, she's. I didn't want to say sidekick, and I said, "What did I say the other day? Side cart." <laughs> Or sidekick or something like that. And she said she felt like she was like like I could see her with a little helmet on, you know, like one of those little tiny cars. With no with like just a chin strap. You know what I mean? One of those helmets with just a chin strap. Yeah. That so she's not here this morning. She had something she had to meet somebody this morning and uh so we're going to go with it. Mountain moving faith. Actually, it's interesting. The scripture title or the scripture passage we're using today is actually one of the latest tattoos I have on my forearm. And there's a little backstory there um, that the uh, tattoo artist, who's phenomenal, by the way, just messed up, got the wrong verse. And, and just by the sheer grace of God and some good old creativity by my son, we have found a way to make it work. And, uh, but Matthew 17, 14 through 20. And um, you can ease this music down in my ear a little bit if you want to. I feel like I, I feel like the whole time I'm like I'm just like one constant monologue or one constant opening here. So I'm gonna read this to you. We're talking about mountain moving faith this morning. Mountain moving faith. Yesterday we talked a little bit about maintaining faith. And I guess te- technically, unless it changes, the freestyle is kind of going the direction of faith this week. But that's a great topic, right? What a great topic coming into any time of the year, but coming into the end of the year especially. I think that there's a lot of times we believe we're believing God you know, four things. Sometimes we do an assessment at the end of the year. That's a lot of times where people begin to look back and reflect and they begin to say, okay, what changes can I make? How can I go into the next year differently? What can I do, you know, now to prepare? And I'm always a big proponent of not waiting. You know, the reason I don't think, I don't think New Year's, I think that I get the concept of New New Year's resolution, but I don't think they they work. Obviously it's proven they don't work um, or they don't stick. But I think that one of the thing, one of the things that I've learned to do around this time, and I'm beginning to do it now, is what you want to see next year. You know, put a down payment on it. Put a down payment on it. What I mean by that is, if you don't wait to start in January because you're looking at a fresh calendar, start now and make it a seed today into what you're expecting as a harvest in 2022. And uh, so, you know, looking at Matthew 17, you know, 14 through 20, we're talking about mountain moving faith. This is a story. And again, yesterday we talked a little bit about um, little faith. Well, we talked a little bit about little faith, right? And we looked at somebody who had little faith. And we're going to kind of, we'll kind of redefine that again in case you missed it yesterday or to bring it back into the, to the, to, to the topic today. But in Matthew 17, 14, 20, it says at the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. And Jesus said, you faithless, faithless and corrupt people. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting how Jesus, Jesus went rogue right there. Like, I mean, that's a little, that's a little offensive, right? I mean, like he went, you know, it, it doesn't make me feel bad. Sometimes when I do that, you know, I'm thinking, was I a little too harsh? And you guys all know what I'm talking about. But hey, if Jesus did it, that was harsh, right? I mean, he get, actually, he started out harsh and gets a little bit like, when he gets alone with them, he gets a little bit, a little bit less harsh and he kind of breaks it down. But the, what he said in front of everybody, he busted them. He's like, you faithless and corrupt people. <laughs> with an exclamation point. Yeah. You faithless and corrupt people. <laughs> how long must I be with you? How, listen to that. How long must I put up with you? Think about that. I mean, Jesus was a little, Jesus was a little bit fed up, right? And I think that what happens is, and I think, can I just say this? He he got fed up because he had constantly, he had taught and taught and taught and exemplified and, you know, and just, just did, acted, lived out faith, big faith, full faith, 
in front of the disciples. And so when this man said, hey, I've, your disciples couldn't, you know, Jesus knew that, that he was getting ready to go to the cross soon, right? And that he was going to physically not be there. And that, you know, these disciples, he wanted to impart this into them so that, because he said, right, because the spirit comes, he said, greater things will you do because I go to the father. He was already forecasting this. So I just believe Jesus was, I believe Jesus was questioning the vision and not questioning, you know, the vision's validity, but questioning the, the, the progress of it. I mean, can I just say that Jesus was all God, but he was also all man. He was sitting there and he was, he was tempted to go, this isn't, this isn't on track, I mean, that's kind of what he was saying. How long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you, you faithless and corrupt people? He said, bring the boy here to me. I'm going to do it one more time. Then Jesus rebuked the demon and the boy, and it left him, right? And from that moment on, the boy was well. And here's this, the 20, going into the 20th verse, or 19th and 20th verse, which is really cool. He says, the disciples afterwards, and this is privately Jesus calmed down a little bit, right? You know, I mean, he had a chance to kind of, you know, chill. And then they're sitting there, just the disciples and Jesus, and they ask him privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? And then he came right back. Now he doesn't, he may have been calmer, but he didn't pull any punches. Look what he said here. You don't have enough faith. You don't have enough faith. Now I want you to hear this. He went on to say, I tell you the truth, if you had faith even the size, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. So here's the thing. Jesus said you don't have enough faith, but all you need is the faith the size of a mustard seed, and you can speak to a mountain and it moves. So these disciples were dealing with not having even enough faith to compare to a mustard seed. Because Jesus said you don't have enough faith. So we talked about little faith yesterday. Today we're going to talk about mountain moving faith, but let's look at little faith. Let's kind of let's analyze it for a second. What I'm talking about, when little faith sounds like what I'm talking about here, right? Because I said, he said, you don't have enough faith. Well, that's, it's not the same thing. We talked about yesterday, the little faith means when, with regards to Peter, right? He looked at him and he's, you know, he, 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 when Peter sank, and this is after Peter stepped out on a boat, he had great faith, but he had little faith. His faith, his faith was, his faith was like, you know, his faith was a mini me faith. It was like a, it was a, it was just a, a, a small example compared to the vastness of Jesus or the faith in Jesus. Think about this. He looked at Peter who walked on water, who did something that many of us would never do. Obviously we've never done that. And he stepped out on, in faith, walked, did something that natural people can't do, walked to G, begin to walk to Jesus and was distracted by the waves and winds and begin to sink. And so Jesus said, you know, you have little faith. Today, we're talking about mountain moving faith, but we're learning it in a story where Jesus says, your faith's not enough. You don't have enough faith. But if you had just this small faith, you could move mountains. So let's look at it for a second here, right? Jesus had just experienced um, possibly one of the highest points of his ministry, right? As um, his glory became clear, his father expressed love for him, right? Pleasure for him. He had, he had you know, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I mean, Jesus received this, 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 he's at this high point. Then he came down from the mountain, right? Back to this, back to reality. He was, he was in the presence of God, you know, speaking to God, right? I mean, God was pleased with him. He comes back down the mountain, back into reality. The disciples are struggling over an exorcism gone wrong, right? I mean, here they are trying to exercise a demon out of somebody. They couldn't budge an evil spirit. And here's the other thing too. Um, you got to understand that in this scenario, they, they represented Jesus and they were unbelievers in the audience. So there's unbelievers that are watching you and I today. The reason that you and I need to have mountain moving faith is because we're in a world where people analyze and try to find every single possible reason that they can prove God's not real. They're looking to say, ha ha, I didn't think so. And so Jesus was on the mountain, right? And he had spent all this time with the disciples and they were trying to exercise. They were trying to do this. There's nothing wrong with trying, right? They were, they were they're trying to exercise it. But the reality is because of their not enough faith, they were not accomplishing it. So people were in the crowd, you know, were, were like, you know, critics. 
I mean, this is, you know, this is, these are critics here. Some were religious leaders who were jealous of Jesus. Others were ordinary people who were not satisfied with, you know, the trajectory that Jesus was on, like, you know, where he was going, what he was doing. I mean, they wanted like Jesus, they had a different vision for Jesus, right? The crowd was typical of the, the, of this generation of Jews, right? They completely lacked faith in Jesus. And, um, and they were, they, you know, they were, they were unbelievers, there. They were, they were skeptics there. And by the way, there are three types of faith that Jesus described in his response. First, you know, there was the unbelief in verse 17. And, you know, this didn't apply to the father because the, the, the father was desperate for help or the disciples because they had some faith. So Jesus was gathering to the, speaking to the crowd. He, he spoke first in the 17th verse of that scripture passage I read, right, about unbelief. So he was talking about the crowd. There was unbelievers in the crowd. There are unbelievers ever. The reason you need mountain moving faith is there are unbelievers everywhere around us. Okay, these unbelievers were pleased were pleased with the disciples' lack of spiritual authority. You know what I'm talking about? Does that make sense? They were pleased with the fact that the disciples couldn't do this. <laughs> they were happy about it. These were these were people that were like, "Aha, man! They they you can't do this." I knew it. I knew that this wasn't real. It conform, confirmed their theories about Jesus, right? The crowd was, 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 you know, heckling probably, right? Critiquing. Can you imagine like, chan, you know, kind of over in the background laughing and snickering at the disciples, right? As they tried to help the boy. And despite all the evidence of Jesus' authority, all they have seen and heard, they remained unbelievers. This, that's the crowd we're talking about. That's the unbelieving faith, right? And it was frustrating for Jesus because what more could he do? Think about it. I mean, it's the man who fed 5,000 plus sent him home with leftovers. He healed blinded eyes. I mean, he, he raised the dead. You know what I mean? He, he did all kinds of things. Turned water into wine. And then second, in the 20th chapter, or 20th verse of that chapter, Jesus talked about little faith. And we talked about that yesterday, right? When Peter's face, uh, faith in, in 1431, it wasn't little in terms of its size because Peter walked on water. And how many know that takes big faith to walk on water? It was little because of inconsistency. How many have ever had little faith? If you're watching right now and you've ever had little faith, you've ever had inconsistent faith, you were an unbeliever before, then you became a believer, you walked in faith, you had faith, you operated in faith, and then you, but you have little faith or you've had little faith where it's inconsistent. This is how Jesus described the disciples' problem. He said, your, your faith is little. Your faith is not enough. Jesus sent them out on a mission to drive out evil spirits and heal diseases in 10.1 and they've been successful. So the disciples were, you know, had, were experienced in exorcism and healings. But this time they just didn't believe or maybe it was the crowd. I don't know. Maybe it was a tough demon. <laughs> maybe, it was, maybe it was a tough demon. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they were exhausted. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, who knows what, right? You ever just had a, you ever just you ever had faith for something and then other days you just don't have faith for it? Yeah, I've definitely I've definitely had those experiences. Um, a lot of it boiled down for me about the people around me, which obviously I've figured out I needed to surround myself with better people. But people around me saying I couldn't do it, mm -hmm. and that wears on you. So being around a ground like we've talked about this a ton of times, but the people around you in your life are the ones that are also going to be either there to help you or hinder you and. You know, when you have naysayers around you, they can definitely, definitely put a, like, they can be like the wet rag that just goes around on top of the, the small fire that you're starting. Mm -hmm. So I think that, to me, that's probably what it was. It's realistically, you have a ton of people that are there that are just completely discouraging you. <clears throat> right. Regardless of your faith, it's just, it's difficult when you're trying to do something and you have 12 to 37 people all going, ha, ah, we all know you couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So, so it, it might have been the crowd around him. What do you guys think? Anybody else? Anybody good? You guys uh, have speaking of faith, uh, shopfaithgear.co. Um, <laughs> just letting you know. A little shout out there is. I love it. So it could have been the crowd. It could, you guys can chime in anytime you want if you have anything to say, Ash. It could have been the crowd. It could have been a tough demon. Right? It could have been they're exhausted because they had, you know, how I many you know you have to, Jesus, one of the things he did when he went to the mountain is he spent time with God refreshing. So maybe the disciples negated their time with God. Maybe they negated their, their, their alone time with God, their prayer time with God. So it could have been that they were exhausted. Maybe they weren't praying. But whatever it is, right, their faith wavered, 
right? It wavered. I mean, I, it, here's the thing with me. It's like, this is like makes me feel good. You're like, what? Yeah, it makes me feel good because it gives me hope. <clears throat> it gives me hope. I can't tell you how many times my faith has wavered. I mean, they, they, here's the thing. They were walking with Jesus. I mean, like, it had been, it had been possibly a, sh- a small amount of time, just days maybe, since they had watched Jesus do something incredible, miraculous. They'd watched him physically break bread. And, and I mean, I, 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 I know we talked about this and we did like a lot on this God math thing, but I mean, you know, maybe you've never heard it. Maybe you've never seen it. You can get the, the, go to the uh, U version and get into the devotion, the, the faith factor. And you can go back and watch on YouTube, <clears throat> the series on God math and the faith factor. But I mean, that's gotten, it's not even close to being out of me because the reality there, there's so many revelations inside of that, but the thing that just continually blows my mind, and and I, I have to say this again, is that if you were there, just put yourself there for a second, okay? We're talking about mountain moving faith. When there's hungry people, this is not like, hey, you know what? Let's bring them back next week. Hey guys, you know what? Let's bring them back next week and we'll figure out something between now and then. You know, maybe God will come through. We'll send them home when they come back. We don't have the resources to feed them all, but when they come back, I'm sure God will make a way. It's like right now on the spot. Like on the spot, there's thousands of people. They're hungry. <clears throat> and then so Jesus says, bring, bring the kids lunch. And I don't know the size of the basket, but I know what, I know what, I know what uh, uh, five loaves and two fish look like. I know the general size of that. So let's just say the basket was this big. So here's Jesus holding a basket with just seven things in it. And in and, and the basket, and, you know, I said this before, like if, if he just went, like sometimes in, you know, in like in our minds with, with, you know, being around like shows and movies and magic and all kinds of things, you just think like that Jesus went like, you know, and like, boom, it just multiplied. If that would have happened, like Jesus and everyone around him within like 10 yards, 15 yards would be covered in fish and bread instantly. This I'm thinking not, about this. This wasn't Aladdin where the genie just made everything appear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like all of a sudden, boom. Whew, <laughs> hey, can somebody come get me out from under this mountain <laughs> of, you know, it's, that, would, that would be what would happen. And everybody would just come and grab a piece, you know, like off the pile. That's not what happened. So if you think about this, he's got this basket and there's thousands of people, and he's, and he's looking in the basket. I mean, the basket's not like, and then again, the basket's not like the thing on Harry Potter where they reach their hand in that bag and they can stick anything inside of it. You know, it's just like endless. It's a basket, and he's looking at the bottom of the basket. He sees the edges of the basket, and he reaches in the basket at least 5,000 times. <laughs> at least 5,000 times. And he pulls out something every time, and he has to look back in it again. And his faith has got to remain strong again. That's powerful. That's, that's like, that's mind blowing when you think of that. What do you think? I think it's even a representative of like faith itself, you know, like what our faith is supposed to look like. Like I may not know what the next step is. I may not know, but I'm just going to keep reaching in for faith. I'm just going to mm-hmm. keep replenishing. Like it's going to be a well that never runs dry in my life. And if we treat it like that, you know, I think it can kind of get confusing. You know, when you're talking, I was thinking of the fact that yesterday we're talking on you know, this fact that Peter stepped on this on water, which is something that I look at. I'm like, that's crazy. Like, how did you just have the faith to just step out on water? Like, that was like your bold move. Like, mm-hmm. Lord, if it's you, I'm going to just help me walk on water. Like, what the heck? Right. But then you see verses like this, and it says faith the size of a mustard seed. You know, like, it can move mountains. So then I'm like, Lord, like, I, I you know, I start to look at that, and I'm like, okay, he said that he had little faith when he stepped on water, but then you want this faith the size of a mustard seed. And I think if we look at that, you know, our faith isn't supposed to stay the size of a mustard seed. Mm-hmm. It, it can, you know, faith the size of a mustard seed is is can move mountains. But I think really the root of it all, when you look at those things, and here's kind of just to bring some clarity maybe to like, you know, the difference between like little faith and the faith that we're supposed to operate in, you know, number one, it, it just starts with the fact that it's rooted in like all that we, we give all that we have. Mm-hmm. Like we give every ounce of us to the Lord and we just say, 
I'm giving everything. Like, if faith the size of a mustard seed is all you have, then, like, give it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, keep going, keep giving it. But I think the crazy thing is, you know, Peter walked uh, on water not because, you know, he he knew that Jesus was able. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, maybe that would be something weird for me to, like, just randomly ask my dad to do because why? You know, he doesn't know how to walk on water. And, Mm -hmm. like, it's those things. But he knew Jesus is like life. He lived life with Jesus. And so he knew his capability. He knew his power. So he had the capacity and the ability to have more faith in that. Mm -hmm. And I think because of the experience he's had with Jesus and because of the, the relationship he's had with Jesus, where he literally day in and day out watched him operating in, you know, these miraculous things. And so his capacity for faith was way more, you know, because he had experienced it. And so I think don't look at that and limit yourself to mustard seed size faith, but Give all you have, whatever that looks like, whether it is the mustard seed, whether it's a like huge amount of faith, like give all you have to the Lord because you've seen him time and time again in his patterns and the way he, he has blessed your life, the way he's shown up in your life. You've seen it and he's not going to stop now. And I think that's, you know, just when you're talking, that's something that, you know, our faith, just like in that basket, is supposed to continually replenish, mm-hmm. replenish and never run dry. Yeah, I think we get, yeah, and I, and I want a good point points there and i think if anything out of that point is too i got is don't don't get so preoccupied we're talking about different kinds of faith here but it's like it's not like your target should be like okay so i want to have the faith that peter had when he stepped out of the boat but not when he had you know what i mean it's like you get so caught up in it and i think that i don't think that's what the the passage is about too i think it's you know, it's like, what level am i at or you know or what you know how, how what kind of faith do i have it's it's more about putting faith in the one who can do it, right? Yeah. And trusting in the one who can do it. Because it's, it is interesting where he had conversations and it's, it's almost like you can sit there and say, well, I mean, was Jesus able, was Jesus, could Peter please Jesus? That, I mean, that's something somebody yeah. could think. Like Peter stepped out, well, Peter, like Jesus, like did he pat him on the back and be like, hey, good, good job, Peter. But no, he's, you know, he's like, hey man, you know what? You're, you have, you know, a little faith. You know what I'm saying? And the reality is, it's not, it's, but Jesus is the, the most, most encouraging of anyone in the, in, in, that's ever existed as far as encouragement goes. So there's a reason and a lesson behind everything. And, um, and I think, I think what Jesus is, is doing is trying to continually make us better, but we're, but through relying on him. And there's a, the third faith, which is the, 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 the scripture reference on my tattoo, which is the 20th verse of the 17th chapter of Matthew, and then that's tiny faith. So hold, so hear, hear this for a second. So there's, there's unbelief, right? Scroll up, Mike. There's, there's, right there. There's um, one more time, a little bit higher. There's the f- unbelief, which is the crowd, and then there is the little faith, which we talked about, which are the disciples, and how and what they operated in. And I think what Jesus was, you can scroll back up. I think what Jesus was saying about that is that you guys spend time with me. Mm-hmm. You, you, you see everything I do. You, you are to operate and share and walk in and participate in what I do. You're to do what I do. You're to, you're to greater things. Will you do? Because I go to the father. Like, I mean, I want you to, I want to be in you and impart into you. Right. And that's why I think why he was saying that about little faith, because there was so much more like you're with me all the time, but then there's tiny faith. And he's saying all you need is just a tiny amount, which is a mustard seed. It's a tiny seed. That's the size of the faith the disciples needed to move a mountain. And don't get too carried away, by the way, about moving mountains. Jesus didn't literally do that as far as we know, right? No one else ever has. It's, you know, it's not like, you know, that's not the the point. It just represents complete impossibility. So according to Jesus, the size of your faith doesn't matter. And I don't know about you, but that's a welcome relief. What matters is whether it's placed in the authority of Jesus and doesn't waver. I'm going to say that again. The size of your faith doesn't matter, and that's a, that's a relief. What matters is whether it's placed in the authority of Jesus and doesn't waver. That's it. That's the way the impossible becomes reality. Small but steady faith in the authority and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The size of your faith doesn't matter. It's the un, unswerving focus on Jesus that counts. Amen? I mean, come on, because if a, if a tiny seed, if faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain, 
then faith the size of a mustard seed can, can, can heal your, your, your family, can restore your marriage, can touch your children, can resurrect your dream, can, 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 can help and your finances can put your goals back on track. The faith the size of a mustard seed, if it can move a mountain, then it can change your life, amen? But it's faith, it's faith in the authority of Jesus and it's faith that doesn't waver. It's the, it's the way the impossible becomes reality, right? It's small but steady faith that's in the authority and in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, that's good stuff right there. The size of your faith doesn't matter. It's the unswerving focus on Jesus that counts. Yeah. What do y'all think? Mm-hmm. Good? Seriously. All right. It's incredible stuff. I mean, yeah, if you focus your faith on Jesus, like, that is, at the end of the day, that is what matters. You know, you have to put your trust in him. Why? Because you've seen him do it. And I think Amen. that's what we can always go back to. You know, time and time again, he's shown up. Time and time, time again, he's never failed. Like, why would he start now? And so my focus will remain the same. Amen. Praise Jesus. Yay, Lord. Come on, somebody. Hey, I don't know what we're going to talk about tomorrow. But it's going to be, gonna be good. <laughs> Matias is going to rap tomorrow. As e- Matias is going to rap tomorrow. Ez got a little. Like, one of you guys, one of you guys, you guys can beatbox and stuff, can't you? Huh? Which one of you guys? One of you guys. I know Matias can beatbox. Ez, what do you do? Don't I, you got, do something like that? I got musical hands, man. That's musical. it. Just right. my hands are moving. Right. That's it. Maybe we'll put a little something together. All right, guys. Bye. Thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys are enjoying this series on freestyle. Uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow to find out what we will be talking about because everything is kind of up for grabs this week. All depending on what Dave and what is feeling with the spirit is what we will be talking about. So make sure you tune in each and every single morning to find out what it is. If you guys would like, we have a daily encouragement text that goes out every single morning that you guys can opt into. It is completely free. You can text the letters EZGC to 813 813- Five two two three three five six. To everybody that's live with us, we always appreciate you being here with us. But if for any odd reason you guys can't be with us on the live stream, you can always keep up with us in two ways. Number one, go to YouTube, search Game Changer Podcast Live, and make sure you hit the subscribe button and then get the hit the bell so you get notified every single time we upload. We upload our episodes every single day by 330. If you guys would prefer, we have the audio version of this on every podcasting platform out there, the biggest one being Apple Podcasts, so make sure you subscribe to us on whichever one you use and then let us know that you did. If you guys are listening or watching this episode on repeat on the spot of on the podcasting platforms or on YouTube, you can join us live every single morning on Facebook and YouTube live at 8.30 a.m. EST. Just search Game Changer Podcast Live and we will show up in your search bar. Make sure you check out the Feature Bible Plan of the Week, which as God said, it's a six-day reading plan on version in the Bible app. Read through it, subscribe to it, and then let us know what you think. But thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And on that note, we out.